is a monologue written by our very own Sarah Jane, and I'll be reading it out. And I think you'll figure out fairly early on that this, this was written for me to be reading. <clears throat> You're going to find me boring. It's going to happen like that. And then, you're going to find me very, very boring. Not at first. Oh, no, 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 no. At first, you're going to look at me. You're going to want to look at me. Not stand out, model, drop dead gorgeous. No way. No, I'm not, I'm not saying that. But you'll look at me. Because there's something. Something that intrigues you. I can do intrigue. And then, almost without realising it, you'll begin to ponder. And to ponder, is she straight? Is she gay? Is she straight slash gay, or gay slash straight, because you think you're 21st century, like, I do know I can't do androgynous, not with tits like these, but you'll be wanting to know more. You may move quickly to thinking, I might well be shaggable. And this will startle you. Why am I thinking about shagging her? I mean, she's not drop-dead gorgeous. See, I told you. But then you'll think, hey, life's too short, and there's something. And when you look at me, your eyes will have this speculative, explorative, lustful glint in them. And I know, for definite, if I tell you, you'll be more than bored. It's the sport that I miss. I used to be really sporty. I mean, really. Sporty, a complete and utter natural, a real all-rounder. I was picked for every team going. Hockey, county. Tennis, county. Athletics, county. Badminton, England trials and all expenses paid, but carefully monitored. Trip to China. <laughs> Played hard too. At the time, no body was a temple. No, no, no. We'd celebrate everything, win or lose, by dancing. To be honest, I think I was good at sports because I had a bit of that youthful anger. No, 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 no. Controlled fury. Absolutely controlled. Absolutely. Every bit of my energy went into channeling that anger. Practicing. Practicing more practicing, controlled, physical, excellent. Control that stick, that racket, that baton, so it becomes a part of me, an extension of my body. And when your body is in that condition, that absolute, in the zone, peak condition, sometimes I'd catch a glimpse of my shoulder, like the training tops covered nothing, and I'd see my shoulder, and that bit there, it goes just into the bicep, just here. And I lean towards my shoulder. Smell the skin, that smell of fresh sweat, just there. And I kiss it, my shoulder. <laughs> not in public, not with teammates around, no, no, but it's my shoulder. Just there. And it tastes so... Ugh. I knew the rules inside and out. I knew how far I was meant to go, knew how far the others would go. But I was controlled, totally controlled, because I worked day in, day out to focus that temper, that fury, that anger to make me the best I could possibly be. My body performing the best it possibly could to be the best possible teammate ever. Except it didn't quite happen like that. You see, and like I said, bit of a temper. It gave me an edge. You know, team sports, a lot of players play their best on the edge. I did. They all said that I did. But it is an edge. I was great on the edge, but when I went over, it wouldn't have been so bad if we were playing badminton. You know, you get clocked with a badminton racket, you just shrug it off. It hurts the ego more than everything else. But it was hockey. I mean, she deserved it. The ref was rubbish, but it was a new stick. I wasn't used to it. It didn't, it didn't feel, it wasn't a part of me. People didn't scream assault so quickly back then. So I stopped the hockey. I thought it was best. Moved back from the edge. Thought I could continue with other sports. So I thought, but when your body is that fit, 
that sorted, that you want to kiss your shoulder on a regular basis, there is nothing like it. And you can't just stop. You keep on going and going and you push and you push and you kiss and you kiss and it cleanses you and you feel whole and focused and calm and invincible even when you're ill with a stupid virus and your whole body is telling you not to. You just want to feel. Like I said, if, I tell you, if, you will be bored and your eyes will glaze over and they'll slide and drift looking for something else, something easier, something that's not, you will be bored. And that's fine, fine. It bores me. No, really, really, really bores me. I'm so bloody bored with it all. Your eyes, there's something worse than bored. Seeing bored. I think it was the drugs or the alcohol. Maybe it was the drugs and the alcohol. I mean, there were new drugs. I'd taken so many new drugs. There's no point in reading the instructions. And they made me buzzing. I mean, really, really buzzing. I like buzzing. They didn't stop or ease what they were supposed to stop or ease, but then none of the buggers do. Neither does the alcohol. But I was buzzing and we were in a club. And we met a few times and we chatted a bit and, and giggled a bit. I mean, I, I thought if you can giggle with someone, right? And I knew, he looked at me and he thought, intriguing, shaggable. I can see it in his eyes. I can always see it, right? But Hope, that little bastard, cajoled the drugs and the alcohol into telling him. So I told him. We were standing at the bar, he was drinking his cocktail and moving in for that silent eye shag conversation. And I, buzzing, just told him everything in such detail, in such a way that I never, ever had before. I didn't look bored. No, 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 no. His eyes didn't glaze over or drift across the room. No, his eyes lit up. I should have known, really. What with his eyes lighting up and him drinking a porn star martini. I mean, what grown-up orders that out loud in a public place? <laughs> no, his eyes lit up, lit up, and he said, I totally understand. I put my pint of Guinness down on the counter in case I dropped it. Really? I probably looked a bit like a goldfish. I do, he says. Really? Really? Yeah. I suffer excruciating pain too. Uh-huh, I said. He paused for effect. You see, I get this sharp pain right at the bottom of my spine when I sit for ages at the computer. Uh-huh, I said. I have to move around a little bit. Every now and then, only then, does it stop. Uh-huh, I said, a little bit quieter. Like a stabbing pain. But it stops. But it really hurts when it's there. But it stops. I'll show you where. And at this point, he turns around, lifts up his shirt, and points out this teeny tiny place right on his back, next to a chicken pox scar. There, I, I think it's then, he pokes at it a little bit. It's not hurting now, so, so it's, hard, it's hard to tell. They had these really ornate cocktail sticks. The club was known for them, about 10 centimeters long, covered in a logo and a load of sparkly rubbish. And one from his cocktail was by my Guinness, by my hand, on the counter. And I thought, not playing sports, I was away from the edge. But obviously not. That stick was in my hand and then in his back before I even realised. He was a part of me. And he didn't go in very deep, not really. I think I said something like, is that where it hurts? As I plunged, I think, I can't remember, I was in the zone. It should have found me boring. His eyes should have glazed over. Drifted around the room, looking for something else, something easier, something that's not... In a club, no one can hear you scream. So no one noticed. Said the bartender. He saw. I saw his eyes. I saw deep, deep into his eyes, and I saw... something. He didn't react. Except when the bloke had gone. Poured me a pint. <laughs>